Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Happy Aloha Friday and welcome to Perspectives on Global Justice Think Tech Hawaii. This is your host, Beatrice Cantelmo. Today we'll be covering one of the most challenging and unpleasant social injustices in the world, death penalty, also identified as capital punishment. The use of death penalty is cruel and inhumane and degrading. Whatever form it takes, hanging, lethal injection, beheading, stoning, torturing, or electrocution, the death penalty is a violent punishment that has no place in today's criminal justice system and in any society for that, for that matter, for death penalty is a symptom of a culture of violence, not a solution to it. Death penalty, both in the U.S. and around the world, is discriminatory and is used disproportionately against the poor, minorities, and members of racial, ethnic, and religious communities. Since humans are fallible, the risk of executing the innocent can never be eliminated. Furthermore, the astronomical costs associated with putting a person on death row, including criminal investigations, lengthy trials and appeals, are leading many states to reevaluate and reconsider having this flawed and unjust system on the books. Yesterday, Washington State Supreme Court unanimously struck the state's death penalty as arbitrary and racially based, uh, biased, making it the 20th state to do away with capital punishment. That's good news for the eight that rolled inmates from there who will now get life in prison without release. Yet, death sentence is still in the books in 30 states. Texas continues to execute more prisoners than any state. 108 people since 2010. Florida executed 28 people, Georgia 26, and Oklahoma 21 in that time frame. According to Amnesty International, the countries where most death penalties take place are China, Saudi Arabia, Iraq, and Pakistan, respectively. This month, the world was astonished to learn that Arab and U.S. national journalist Jamal Kahoshi was murdered inside the Saudi Arabian consulate in Istanbul. Right now, in Saudi Arabia, the government is cracking down on dissent by arresting people who speak up against the government, subjecting them to unfair trials, sentencing, and long-term sentencing, including death sentence. Journalist Jamal Kanoshi left Saudi Arabia to travel to the U.S. to avoid facing prosecution amidst the wave of arrest in the country last year. And last week, he, wa he wanted to go to the Saudi Arabian consulate to get his divorce paperwork and never came out. Turkish authorities reported that he was murdered inside the consulate. So we give a shout out to the entire world, especially the United States government, to hold Saudi Arabian government accountable. As a government, the United States cannot be allies with governments who violate human rights, even if it means that we end up sacrificing money. The United States are one of the main gun suppliers of Saudi Arabia, and these guns and munitions are the same ones that killed millions of refugees in Yemen, Syria. We have a moral and ethical obligation to hold human rights valuable, value uh, before, before, before profit. Anyway, today we are blessed with the presence of Tori uh, Kinoshida and her students, um, Lakai Kunihim, Noah Schutz, uh, Daphne Hussein, and another student, um, Spencer McKay. Yes. And so let's <laughs> learn about and, and discuss about currency theatre and what it, what it does, and uh, about a student production that they have been working on as a part of a theatre class, A Walking Shadow. And uh, a walking shadow deals with the tragic travesty of justice involving Miles Fukunaga case, an 18-year-old Japanese Hawaiian man who was executed in 1928 in Hawaii. On that note, welcome <laughs> to Perspectives on Global Justice. Uh, Thank you for having us. You, absolutely. So I'm going to start with you, uh, Tori, who uh, actually uh, you know, it's teaching these amazing students uh, and uh, is using uh, cruelty theater uh, as a, a medium to be able to uh, do your work. So can you talk a little bit more of what uh, cruelty theater means? Oh, uh, uh, theater of cruelty is an yes. Artodian concept. Antonin Artaud, who was a French uh, theatrical uh, genius, as it were, um, and he has a notion of action pushed against all limits, and it's actually a very utopian goal, because the idea is that violence enacted on stage or anything 
uh, disconcerting possibly that's enacted on stage is ultimately going to purge the audience mm -hmm. of those desires. Um, this particular production <laughs> is more expressionistic and docudrama, but still that notion remains, I think, um, as a valuable idea, I think, in, in education, in theater, in the arts. Oh, that's yeah. so amazing. Yeah. And how long have you been uh, a lecturer uh, at uh, Wimbledon College? College? Five years five now, years I've, now, I think. Five years. We were in London for a bit, and then we moved back, and it's been really wonderful because we're so lucky. Our students here are phenomenal. <laughs> I mean, they are. They're, they're phenomenal. Um, yes. Yeah, so uh, you know, transitioning to lot talking to our students. So we have Daphne and Noah. So uh, hi. So I'm going to start with Daphne. Daphne uh, Hussein. So uh, um, what are you majoring in now at the Wimwood College? Um, right now, I'm working on getting my concentration in theater, which is now what Winward offers. Um, so yeah, that's in the progress, and I'm also taking the 260 uh, awesome. class production. Mm -hmm. And what about you, Noah Schultz? Um, I'm kind of in the same program. We have a focus program that allows uh -huh. us to get an AA with focus in theater. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what I'm going for now. I'm just picking up my last credits there, and I'm also in the 260. I'm, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's nice. So I have a question for the two of you students, and whoever wants to give the answer first, go ahead. <laughs> so um, when uh, you uh, were first exposed to uh, Fukunaga's uh, case mm -hmm. and uh, the idea of coming up with a, a, a student production, what was your first reaction, and how much did you know about that penalty and about this case prior to the semester? Um, well, when Tari first told me about the play that we were doing coming up, it uh, it struck me as something that's going to be very hard to put on. It's an expressionist piece, and it's it's drawing a lot out of us. But it's it, it's meant to get the the point across that uh, well, we're trying to give more light to a story that isn't normally talked about, and I'm all about that. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it wasn't taught in school, and I want to be able to bring that to more people. And I think that's amazing to be able to take something and put it into the light and show people that this is a part of our history, this did happen, and it shouldn't just be brushed aside. Right. What about for you, Daphne? Um, I actually knew nothing about the case of Miles Fukunaga and how, how everything went, and it was just an, an insane amount of injustice, and I mm. I am learning more <laughs> things about it every time we have rehearsal, and it is, it is um, bringing that awareness to mental illness because there were very little cures at the time. Mm -hmm. There was nothing really to help someone who was suffering with it, and I think that's important, and I'm very blessed to be a part of this production and to bring that awareness. Mm -hmm. Right, and uh, so for you, Tori, who actually uh, wrote the piece uh, and is now producing, um, why did you choose this particular story and theme for this semester? Oh, wow, so this is even though it's quite unheard of, one of the most famous uh, historic Hawaiian criminal penalty cases. So even though we don't learn about it in school or, or, or discuss it too often, it is a seminal case, and there are so many different aspects to it. There's the immigrant experience, there is uh, the idea of poverty and the social hierarchy that uh, still exists and definitely right. still existed in Hawaii to an extreme extent back in the 1920s. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, education, death penalty, mental illness, the sort of travesty that was his trial. So there's there's all these different topics that are important and important for I think our society and definitely from an educational perspective. So I felt like staging it was very important. The hardest thing, oddly, was finding our focus because mm -hmm. there's so many different aspects to the story. It's really an unrelenting tragedy. It's horrible thing after horrible right. thing happens to this poor Japanese kid. Hawaii. Yeah, this poor kid, basically. Yes. Um, he was executed even though he was a minor. Uh, by Hawaii legal standards, he was a minor. Uh, he was criminally, um, uh, I mean, he was, in, he was mentally ill, he was mentally ill. Oh, in fact, Daphne, Daphne's character as the sister has um, a sort of a, a very important speech about it, if, if you want to maybe share some of those. Yeah, thoughts. let's talk about your character a little um, bit, and yours too, Noah. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, um, after he was officially convicted, there was only four days before he was sentenced to the death penalty. The jury itself was completely biased. There was only one Japanese American who was an editor of a newspaper that um, he had already written articles 
um, accusing Miles of murdering this boy, Gil Jameson. Mm -hmm. And so there was just a complete amount of just unfairness and the jury and his defense attorneys did not even like try to move the trial so that they could get you know a fair amount of jury or let, at least um, wait a while before the articles went out so that at least new people would come in with a fresh mind. I right, believe, yeah. Right. So, it was, so not only there was the injustice of the criminal justice system, but the media at the time to disseminate the information to the public and making up their mind before really considering all mm -hmm. of yes. the you know, investigative work, if any, you know, that really was uh, going on at that time. Oh, yes. The star advertiser at the time called for the, quote, formality of the trial. Mm -hmm. After the formality of the trial, he will get sentenced straight to execution. And uh, by contrast, that same year that mm -hmm. Miles Fukunaka was executed for killing a Gil Jameson. Mm -hmm. um, Three men set a Japanese cab driver on fire and were only sentenced to 20 years imprisonment. And then um, another Japanese cab driver was bludgeoned in the head with a hammer by a white male and he was only sent, um, convicted of second degree murder and then they let him go. So you see the disparity in uh, social injustice yeah. in the criminal justice system yes. Definitely. back then. And I, I, Noah, what about your uh, uh, character in the, in the play? You want to talk a little bit about it? Uh, yeah, my character is Dr. Lockwood Merrick, who was the assistant professor of philosophy at University of Hawaii. And he uh, studied the Fukunaga case um, as it was happening and after it, and he read letters from Miles and things like that. And he wrote um, a letter uh, to the governor of the territory of Hawaii at the time, uh, Wallace Farrington, um, calling for uh, a stay of execution to say that they really hadn't studied his, his mind enough. You know, they had three doctors look after him in a psychiatric exam that wasn't really a psychiatric exam. It was three doctors who didn't know much about psychiatry sort of giving their best guess. And of course, they were biased, so they didn't do the best job. And he, he points that out, and he points out that uh, he had experience with um, mental illness and criminally insane people, and he wanted to sort of give Miles, or well not sort of, he wanted to give Miles a fair shot and to kind of explain why Miles did it and delve into how or what he was thinking. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, so, um, in uh, for a, a question for you, in the making of this uh, play, um, how much did you have to do uh, in terms of research with actual uh, documents to be able to support the development of each character and give more frame to the uh, story? So uh, after the research, actually the hardest thing was the fact that it's a class, so I'm also trying to make sure that each student has an equal part. Because that's one of the things when we're at community college, you know, we, we take great pride in the fact that it's not like our in our shows, there's like one star, you know, one star student mm -hmm. and then everybody else is in the course. So all nine students in the cast have good sized roles. They all have lots of stuff to do. It's pretty equal. Um, and then, uh, so then, that's, and so this is why in the play, all the lines spoken by Miles and these Kings of Shadows characters who sort of um, embody his mental illness, mm -hmm. those were all lines or, or words written or spoken by Miles himself. So I got the research together for that and then I used the other character just to sort of fill in the story. So, so in that case, there's a lot of summarizing, and yeah. you know, it's not quite exact. But everything's Miles, the Miles Fukunaga himself, the character of Miles Fukunaga himself. All the words he speaks are his own. Right. Well, that's really amazing. How many students total do you have in class for this semester? That's covering this this semester is just ten actually mm -hmm. it's just ten yeah. so many backstage how amazing ten. how intimate to be able to it walk is. with it ten is. students it's nice. It's nice. well I have to take a minute break but we'll be right back thank you so much for coming here thank I'm you for having us I will be there next week <laughs> with <laughs> both of you and the other eight students. <laughs> yes.
Hello, my name is Stephanie Mock, and I'm one of three hosts of Think Tech Hawaii's Hawaii Food and Farmer Series. Our other hosts are Matt Johnson and Pumai Weigert, and we talk to those who are in the fields and behind the scenes of our local food system. We talk to farmers, chefs, restaurateurs, and more to learn more about what goes into sustainable agriculture here in Hawaii. We are on at Thursdays at 4 p.m., and we hope we'll see you next time. Aloha, my name is Mark Shklov, I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea is on Think Tech Hawaii every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join me where my guests talk about law topics and ideas and music and Hawaiiana all across the sea from Hawaii and back again. Aloha. Welcome back to Perspectives on Global Justice Think Tech Hawaii program. This is your host Beatrice Cantemo, and uh, we are here back uh, with uh, Tori and uh, two uh, <laughs> new students who joined us for this uh, last segment of our episode. So we have Noah. Uh, no, uh, Akai, uh, I'm sorry. No, I just left. Akai <laughs> and Spencer. And so, uh, so let me start with you, Spencer. Uh, what is your major in the, what is your role uh, in this play? Right. Um, in this play, I am playing one of the Kings of Shadows, which is to oh. Alakai's character, Miles, uh, the manifestation of his psychosis. So it's the human embodiment of his mental illness. Right. Um, and I will ask more about that. And Anakai, so you are Miles? Yes, I'm playing Miles Fukunaga yeah. in, the, in our show. Wow, that is quite an honor and quite a responsibility. <laughs> so uh, give me a feel of uh, um, what is it like to uh, play, you know, Miles, a character in, um, you know, like, as it evolves, uh, uh, you know, in mm -hmm. your practice, you know, like, what have changed for you personally as, you know, uh, you know, like I... Right, right. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, um, when, when I was told that I was going to be playing this role, I, I did some research into the case and um, into, like, the, the life of Miles. And it's, like, it's such a tragic story because um, growing up, all he wanted to do was study and go to college and, and go to school, yeah. and um, but he was a very he was from a very poor and a very large family growing up right. in um, Hawaii in the 1920s, where if you weren't if you weren't white, you really didn't have like a word in, and so through through playing this character uh, through his his life all the way up through his execution, I feel um, that personally it's been like it's been a very uh, gratifying experience. Uh, and it's been um, very uh, fulfilling, uh, I would say, to be able to uh, give a voice to, to Miles and portray him on, on stage when he wasn't able to uh, really Back, like, have his own voice when he was going through his own life when he was alive, so. Right. May I ask how old are you? Uh, I'm 22. You're 22. So, you know, you are a little bit older than... <laughs> You know, Miles when he was 18 mm -hmm. and this was happening. And um, were you born and raised here? Or did you come yes, to um, so? I was. I was born and raised on Oahu. Uh -huh. uh, I've traveled a few times, but I've never lived anywhere else other than right here in Oahu. Right. So, uh, in, in many ways, um, like, I think the rendition of being able to give someone a voice mm -hmm. after. You know, 90 years, you know, of so much injustice, you know, it's just so amazing. Uh, and so, um, so there you are, you know, 10 students walking in this, you know, amazing uh, play. And uh, so before you, um, before this semester, how much did you know about death penalty and the criminal justice mm. system? Not only in the United States, but globally, but also in Hawaii? So um, I didn't actually know uh, too much. I've always been um, personally anti-death penalty. I, I, don't, I don't agree with it. Mm -hmm. and, but I hadn't done too much uh, like extensive research into it before uh, being a part of the show. But 
I, um, I still haven't like put in tons of effort like globally per se, but like I did a lot of research into uh, how the death penalty was used in Hawaii, and it it's uh, it's it's really like tragic that it was always so um, skewed towards people of mm -hmm. poverty, people who um, were minorities, people who didn't have as much in life. Um, right. So it's. Which is very yeah. much the body of, uh, you know, uh, those who end up uh, in the death row, you know, mm -hmm. the poor, the destitute, the mentally ill, yes. the, uh, you know, minority groups, the racially and religiously persecuted individuals, not right. only in the United States, but across the globe. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so like, as, you know, as students on the, you know, like, when you think about, um, you know, majoring in arts or doing something with theater. I mean, what is your hope, really, and as you, you know, get out of school and get into, like, everyday world, you're like, what would you like to, you know, do with these oh skills goodness. to be able to give continuity to, you know, what you're starting? I mean, because this is quite a legacy, you know? Right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I'm, um, I, I want to be a professional actor, but that oh. seems secondary to, like, the goal of, what I want to do with my acting skills, which is I want to do any kind of work, whether it's paid or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. just to combat injustices, to combat stigmas, like what we're doing with this play, combating mental health stigma. Um, right. Um, yeah, like just really trying to remedy some of the horrible <laughs> things that happen in the world. I mean, whatever, I feel very passionately about a lot of the issues we're talking about in this play, right. uh, death penalty and restorative justice maybe, or yeah. moving toward a system where we don't punish people because mm -hmm. there's so much wrong that happens in yeah, that, exactly. that system. Exactly. More sure. towards rehabilitative yes. models as mm -hmm. opposed to punitive as mm -hmm. we do have it now. And what about for you, Alakai? Um, I, I've always thought that um, like theater and the arts in general are like the best way to like like Spencer was saying, get like awareness out for for different issues and really like educate the like the community and bring like and bring people together and uh, regardless of how I, I go about it through like my um, my acting experience uh, mm -hmm. after I finish my major, I I too I want to make sure that I can you know do something more not just strictly for entertainment but like. You know, help raise awareness mm -hmm. for different issues. Help raise awareness for different um, problems and injustices in this world. So, right. use it to like make the world a better place, as it were. That's that's really amazing. Your students deserve all A pluses. You know, they're really bad. <laughs> 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 you see how that is an instructor. <laughs> tell, tell me about that. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, you know, so, uh, I mean, like, I think arts have such a special way and, and, and there are so many mediums to be able to mm -hmm. convey messages that a lot of times what we try to do through grassroots organizing, we may not be able to move or, or reach people, you know,'s hearts. And, you know, so I, I, I'm just so grateful, you know, that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, at such a young age, you're already thinking about how to make that bridge happen right. in your day to day, mm -hmm. you know, routine, uh, we beyond this semester in this class. Right. So, well, a little bird told me that <laughs> Amnesty International Hawaii chapter will actually join two of your presentations, I think, oh. on the 20th of October and on the 26th prior to the play. 21 and 26. Oh, the 24. Oh, sorry. The 24. <laughs> and the 26. And uh, so, uh, you know, like, did you even know that there was a, you know, Amnesty International Hawaii chapter I in I, Oahu? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think we yeah, knew that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's neat. And uh, so, well, there might be an opportunity to, uh, you know, bridge it and, and extend, uh, you know, like right. your passion for arts, you know, to be able to do social justice, you know, in so mm -hmm. many ways. That's really, really neat. And uh, Dori, so, um, so what is your hope uh, as the community uh, is invited to um, attend, uh, you know, this marvelous student-led uh, um, production. What do you hope that the, the uh, viewers and the community in general um, 
say, okay, I'm going to take one of these days, you know, and come over and, and watch the play. Oh, goodness. I, I have quite a few hopes because, one, um, theater is absolutely the most amazing art form. <laughs> I just have to say that. It is. It is because it's the only art form that uses all the different fine arts. You, you need to know literature, you need to know music, you need to know um, movement, you need to know visual composition, um, and it's also a social art form. It's a social art form, so it can serve its community in, in such a precise way. Uh, millions of people may see a film and you know forget about it, but because uh, fewer people can see a play, it's ultimately always quality over quantity. And so if you really move those fewer people and they remember the lesson forever, because I, I do, as, as the students have all said, I, I definitely agree that artists have a moral responsibility to serve their society. Um, and so with this particular show, because it's our own story, it's, our, it's a story from Hawaii for this community, the, the you know, community living on Oahu. It took right. place right here in Oahu. Um, I hope there is, uh, the audience leaves with an awareness of the sort of path we've taken and how far we still need to go, uh, mm -hmm. how uh, injustice, especially the death penalty is, as you mentioned, you know, Hawaii is a microcosm for how, you know, the story, the Miles Fukunaga story is a microcosm for how it's used globally. You know, in Hawaii, historically, only one a white person was executed before it became illegal in 1956. Everybody else was a minority um, and poor, right? And then, and does that that absolutely reflects what is happening globally with it, right? And um, so, an awareness of our own history and um, also mental illness, uh, raising awareness and sympathy for that as well, as well as. Uh, sort of agency is one of our themes, both cultural and mental, mm -hmm. and so that uh, our stories need to be told, that we all need equal representation, basically. And, um, and I hope they're not horribly, too horribly, uh, I mean, it's a very sad story. <laughs> it's a very sad story. Yeah. Were you going to say something? No, I wasn't going to yes. say anything. Uh, oh, so, no. well, I have a quick question for you uh, before we wrap up. Uh, uh, so, like, you play the, vo the voices yeah. and the psychosis mm -hmm. of Miles. Oh. Like, so before, uh, you know, you started playing these roles. What was your awareness of mental illness? <laughs> oh my goodness, that's the right question. <laughs> awesome, so, actually. Yeah, it's so, a second to develop. So, um, actually, no, uh, this play is opening on the four-year anniversary of my first hospitalization, incidentally. Um, I was psychotic, and I've been psychotic, so I'm very aware of the challenges that come with representing this type of illness. And so I'm... It is something that kind of petrifies me in a way. Actually, I'm I'm very wary of like creating a stigmatized representation of this very specific mental illness that Miles has. Um, but I'm I'm hopeful, and I trust in Tari's vision that we are creating something that will educate people and enlighten people and help them see what people like me go through. You know, mm -hmm. and especially what people like me have gone through historically. Right and especially with people like Miles have gone through, you know, you add different layers, like the fact that he's a Japanese American, that just makes his situation that much more difficult in Hawaii at that time, you know, right. so. I'm just yeah. so proud of you for uh, not only, you know, uh, coming out publicly <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> about uh, your brain disorder, but, you know, for the strides you had to, you know, go through, you know, in your life path, you know, at such a young age to yeah. be able to, um, not only um, be in t you know get to terms with your own yeah. diagnosis, but also be stable yeah, and uh, and productive, <laughs> and yeah. that you are so much more than a diagnosis. Right. There is the for you, you. <laughs> and I'm just you know even more excited you know for this play. So um, well, I can't believe the 30 minutes have passed. <laughs> so I wish I could interview you guys for like an example <laughs> hour, but come back you know uh, soon, and uh, I hope our viewers really enjoyed. Uh, um, you know this this beautiful gift, and uh, um, go to Winwood uh, uh, Community uh, College uh, Theatre. And uh, the opening starts uh, for the play on Next the nineteenth. Yeah. Yep. And uh, can you tell us the schedule a little bit? Uh, Yes, so we're going to have uh, two weekends of shows, the 19th to the 27th. We have Friday, Saturday, Sunday, the first weekend, and then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, the second weekend.
And the 4 p.m., it's 4 p.m. on Wednesday and Sunday, and the rest are 7.30, and it's 80 minutes long. So it's a very compact experience. Yeah. Well, this concludes our episode of Perspectives and Group Justice for today. Thank you so much, our viewers, for watching us. And until next time, I hope.